I don't like shoes, but it better be. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. It better be worth your while because it will require the finest fibers of your soul. Because otherwise, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing with yourself? If you're not fully living something, what is that you're doing? And what is that you're planning to live if not now? When? Welcome to the Crossing It Off podcast, where each episode we share the stories of individuals that are living out their bucket slash life goal lists. I am your host, Roger Williams, and through hearing our guests' adventures, my goal is that you will find encouragement and empowerment to add and cross items off of your list. Welcome everyone to the show, and I'm so excited to introduce my guest for the day's episode. His name is Simon Swordlow, and he describes himself as a romantically pragmatic lover of life. So, Simon, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Roger. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, for sure. So tell the audience, what was the, the thing that you crossed off your bucket list? The biggest thing that... Uh... It was immigrating to the United States. Yeah, that's that's pretty heavy. That's a pretty big uh, list item. So where did you immigrate from? I'm originally hailing from uh, Belarus. It's, uh, you know, the country which is becoming ever more known, but yeah. Sure. And how old were you when you did this? I was 22, 22 years old. 22, 23 years old. Wow. And so what was the reason why? What was the thing behind your head that said, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this on my list and I'm going to cross it off. Simple reason. I haven't, I haven't seen, didn't see the future where I was born. I didn't see the future for myself. I didn't see the future for my kids. And I saw from TV, I saw from different stories that there is a, I could be living in a better future and building my future and being sort of master of my own destiny. Yeah, and and the pain of the staying there was a much greater than the pain to make those steps. So, what were some of those steps that you took to immigrate to the, to the U.S.? What was the, like the first thing that you had to do besides say, "I'm going to do it"? This, yeah, thank you. The steps were to for me to get actually because I didn't have a, a family here. I didn't have uh, really nobody, and uh, oh. I got a student visa. That was okay. my step to get here. Got the student visa, and then uh, it took me about two and a half years to uh, work on one to get because it, it's not easy to get a student visa into the United States. And uh, but that's I was determined to get it, and I got it. And so you came to the states as a student. You studied. Yep. When what did you study when you were here? I uh, came to it's, it's actually it was a rabbinical college of America. That's how okay. I came to in Morristown, New Jersey. And then I went. Uh, then I uh, a year later, um, I went to um, uh, Sy Sim School of Business in New York. Um, yeah, that's what that's what my student uh, life in the United States was. And so the so a student visa is only for so long, right? I mean, you only have so much time on that. So what was the next step to secure like more permanent residency for you? The next step was the, that I. Uh, got accepted into a company who sponsored my uh, okay. work visa, H-1B, so known as H-1B visa, and subsequently the green card. So I worked yeah. for the company for 13 years. It took me, uh, I got my green card in 2008, which was like uh, nine years later. And then, uh, yeah, totally I worked for the company for 13 years too. Okay, and have you since become a citizen, or are you still operating yes, off of that? Yes, I've become yeah, become a citizen. And what was that process like for you? How long did that take? Uh, usually, it actually takes once you have the, the, the most difficult part is to, is to actually get the green card. Mm -hmm. You know, it, uh, it's uh, and then it basically takes five years since you get your green card to apply um, for citizenship. And if you're like a permanent resident in good standing, you can apply. For uh, citizenship okay and you took the test and everything and that was yeah yeah <laughs> that's good it was yeah. that was uh, yeah some some of the facts i you know was fascinated to learn and know about the country it was really good you were older when you immigrated here you weren't you weren't a young you were young but you weren't a young person you you didn't come with your family 
you said you came alone. Um, what were what were some of the things that you used to like connect once you got here, or people that you that reached out to you? Was was there some kind of commute builders and community that you could connect to, or was it just totally becoming trying to fit into U.S. society from scratch? Uh, I was connected because through the Rabbinical College of America. I was connected to the, uh, you know, connected to Jewish community here locally uh, to try to really find my own way. Mm-hmm. Because this was, uh, you know, subsequently it became really important for me to find my own identity. Mm. Uh, because, you know, as you mature, as you grow, as you learn things, as you become aware of a number of things, uh, you reevaluate certain priorities, you reevaluate kind of the world around you and more, more importantly you reevaluate your place in the world and how you know whether you're living your life whether you're living your own life it became very important for me kind of the most important thing for me because I realized that life is all about life <laughs> mm-hmm. for sure what were some of the biggest um, things that you had to get accustomed to in that transition from being in Belarus to being in the United States what were what are some of the things that were difficult for you or just challenging as far as making that transition? I was so immersed. Uh, I was so immersed into like making it happen. Mm. That I didn't even, uh, you know, subsequently I realized that it's, it's all about the stories that we're telling ourselves. And I didn't have time to tell myself a story that something is difficult. Exactly. My story is, was you're already here. It's exactly what you wanted. It's not exactly what you ultimately want. Therefore, wake up and just make it happen and do the best that you can today to get you to the better tomorrow. That's so I didn't have the story of, honestly, even I don't remember what was difficult. I, I was just like crushing it. <laughs> and, and doing and doing. Is there anything yeah. you miss from Belarus? Um, not, but it was a conscious decision to live. Yeah. Uh, to leave, actually, yes. And uh no, my parents, I actually, my parents uh, followed me here. Uh, you know, everything kind of is here. My life is here. I feel very much at home. Not, not, not yeah. even missing any food or was were your parents going to be able to come over and help you cook food? Or the, the, yes, the, exactly. you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's a good one. Yes, <laughs> of course. They, you know, but it was, I guess it was more of a homemade food. You know, the thing right. that we I guess miss from our, you know, mother's or grandmother's kitchens. <laughs> Mother sure. Nerd, Bill Russian or some other. I think that I guess was the yeah. Thank you. you just nailed it. If somebody else from another country is thinking about doing this, what would be the one thing that you tell them? Hey, and you, if you're going to do this, you need to. I think the one thing to do is uh, like with everything else. If you want to do it, you uh, you don't hope for this. You don't believe it. You don't pray for it. You don't. Mm-hmm. You just like own it. And it so becomes part of you even before you realize it, that it's not even funny. Like you just adopt this mindset, like I'm already there. Mm -hmm. So, and it's like, and and it helps you to really, even though you haven't manifested it yet, it helps you to always, always be in the mindset, whatever I'm doing, like right this second, is it getting me closer to the desired outcome? That's really the question, because if your answer is no, then it's probably not getting to where you want right, to be, and, and right. it's not going to happen on its own. But if your answer is yes, and you and you and you intentionally say, "Yeah, I'm actually doing those baby steps," mm-hmm. and it could be a long, long way, but you know, you don't know the truth of this. If you start doing something, things start manifesting much better and much faster. Maybe not as fast as you would love this to be in the first place, but it's much better and faster than you think usually what how things will evolve yeah awesome yeah for sure that's definitely um, the right mindset to have for most things i think that's uh, that's a good mindset what's something that surprised that like pleasantly surprised you in the transition like when you got here what was something that was like oh this is i didn't expect this this is a good is there something like that that you experienced when you when you came? I in? actually love uh, I actually love Americans <laughs> <laughs> because I was born yeah I was born in a mindset you know like a different mindset in a different part of the world and and uh, and and I uh, since then I've worked with a lot of Amer- you know I wasn't even working as much with the uh, you know Belarusian Russians whatever Soviet community former Soviet Union 
I was working mostly with the American. I, I just like uh, you know the demeanor, I like the you know the lifestyle, the way of life. You know, it's a lot of things. It was really pleasantly surprising. Pleasantly surprising, yeah. Is there something specific about Americans that surprised you? That I mean, was just it- the way you guys. I don't know. It's just like the way that you. It's it's a it's the overall um, embracing life on a different level. Mm. Like be a little bit more, and I know that uh, you know maybe too many people like sort of take it for granted and don't know. But for somebody who's coming from a different world, from a different society, from a different having a different fiber of a society, it's very. I appreciated it a lot. Like you know that you can just like strike a conversation, you know, on the airplane or whatever, and online, and just have a conversation without like turning your head around it's like what do you want you know it's like I don't mm-hmm. feel like who are you what is that a little bit of a sort of a suspicion of things like that it's very you know it's oh and it's very light I, I love that part actually nice okay because because it's like every day and you go about this and those things happen to you every day and again uh people i guess may take it for granted but it's huge mm-hmm. huge huge part of what uh uh, yeah, make your life really those little like sort of encounters. Yeah, I think there's lots of things that um, we as Americans tend not to remember to be grateful for. From an outside perspective, coming into the country, is there is do you have ideas or suggestions for us on how we can not take those things for granted, or or some of the things we could do to make sure that we're remembering the gifts we have from being born and growing up in this country. Uh, I believe that uh, there is no limit to freedom. It's actually, as I'm saying this, it's almost sounds even like, like an oxymoron. There is no limit to freedom, right? Mm. Uh, it just like occurred to me though. And uh, I think it's, you know, since there is way more freedom than anywhere, I think it's important to embrace this individuality, individual freedoms on the very tiniest again, on the, from day to day, every uh, sort of not to be stuck necessarily with stigmas, mm-hmm. but more embracing, like truly, embra- truly embracing diversity, truly embracing, uh, you know, individualism and freedom and everything. Just like exactly what the forefathers, you know, kind of how it was started. Like I think it's it's it could be taken to the next level. I believe. So what have you done with this freedom that you've now experienced? What what has what has blossomed in your life over the course of, of the last 15, 20 years? Yeah, thank you. So since uh, I've joined this uh, for the chocolate company, which um, I love, you know, I love that experience. It wasn't mm-hmm. the easiest experience, but in retrospect, I love this experience. Uh, so helped to develop this uh, company into, into franchise in 56 different countries. And then... At some point, I looked in the mirror and I heard actually Steve Jobs' speech, and and he it was about him. Um, it was actually a movie about Steve Jobs, right? Mm-hmm. That, that yeah. how he was, you know, created the company, the first one, the first famous one. Um, how he created the company, was fired from that company, came back, built it to like a trillion dollar business, and I was like so fascinated by that story. And I realized at that point that, gosh, anything that uh, you, I would set my mind to and willing to really work it and manifest actually happened in my life. So, and, it's, and it gave me this sense of accomplishment, gave me such a, to the point of almost like arrogance. It's like, <laughs> hey, you know, choose your next goal like wisely, make it real big, you know, because if you're really willing to put your time and you're willing to put your soul and everything into this, it may, it should be, I don't like should, but it better be, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's better be worth your while. It's better be worth your while because it will require, and again, it's better require the the finest fibers of your soul. Because otherwise, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing with yourself? If you're not fully living something, what is that Mm -hmm. you're doing? And what is that you're planning to live if not now, like when? All of these questions, I think we should ask. So, and uh, since then, I just looked and said, okay, selling chocolates is good, but changing the world is better. (laughs) (laughs) So, 
And basically, I dedicated myself to really sharing this uh, mindset that you can live your your life to the fullest. And the best way to do it is truly identify your like truest potential, your true strengths, and put them to work. Because going back really to the bucket list, I think that I frankly believe that our entire life can be a bucket list, like sure. one big bucket of things. Yeah. Because because what's happening, the, the the concept of a bucket list, and I don't want to kind of instead of prioritizing our schedule, we should schedule our priorities. Again, I don't believe mm. we should schedule our priorities. And if we schedule our priorities, then it's like, oh, of course I want to be with my family. Of course I want to travel those countries. Of course I want to spend time with the people that I love. Of course I want to do more of the things that I But then there's coming the question is like, who is going to pay for all of that? Because that's a very valid question. Right. So, and basically the answer to that question, okay, so I'm going to work hard on something to have those little episodes that are fun. And I said to myself, no, there can be a better way. It's mm-hmm. like, why would you work for 11 months to have a one month of vacation? If that, if you actually if that, if get, you, if get you, a month. <laughs> exactly. So I realized, no, they better, they got to be a better way. And so, and, and I started sort of, uh, you know, looking and doing the research and the, the famous, you know, uh, expression of like, if you love what you do, you don't work one day in your life, you know, things like that. So I really started working on helping people to truly find the truest, truest, truest like potential that they can put to work. Meaning getting paid for it, meaning doing what they love, getting paid, and not to escape from that lifestyle, but to really enhance it by traveling, right. by doing other things. So it, then, it's, then it becomes a completely different way of living. So that's what I'm, you know, that's, and, I, and I love it and I see the dreams are manifesting and this is kind of what I'm living right now in the world of of dreams that are being realized and so I'm how, like part of yeah yeah so how do you do that specifically how do you do that I'm interested in Specific, oh specifically um it started actually with a, a platform you know we feel like it's an app but it's a web app today that helps people to uh sort of step uh, inside of themselves to really look into themselves. It doesn't take too much time, actually. And the way it's constructed that it helps people, it asks people specific questions about specific information, what they love, what they don't love, a little bit about their personality, nothing esoteric, nothing crazy. Just simply, it's like, hey, just don't stop asking your family, stop asking your friends, stop asking the world, stop listening to the how other people did it. The way they did it, that's the way they did it. Right. You can get an inspiration from this, but ultimately, the best way to be yourself is to look into yourself. Mm-hmm. Just honestly, um, uh, with respect, with understanding of yourself, and just really look into yourself, analyze yourself, and say, you know what? That's the kind of person I would love to be. Because that's really a starting, that's a great starting point. Uh, you know, to really look at the person, what I like, what are my things that I love to do, what are different industries that I would love to be involved in, you know, what is the, you know, it, it asks you a number of different uh, things. So basically you create sort of this profile of your ideal self. That's your starting mm-hmm. point. Now, because usually, and it doesn't take more than a weekend, really. it's, it's not like a, you know, right. lifelong, the whole idea to make it manageable mm-hmm. and at least to get into something to really, uh, start, you know, get yourself together, as we say, right? Get yourself together over, over one weekend and just simply make a pause from everything else, you know, social media, all this stuff, and really spend this weekend with you. The next thing, because you may find yourself that it's like it's it's a fun, it's looking good, but how do I actually? What are my practical steps into actually making it happen? That's where we have the team aspect. Like we will now. Uh, the company that uh, we're creating is called WeCo, right? It's all about we connect, we collaborate, we co-create. Now it puts you together with other compatible, which is very important, compatible mm-hmm. people who also understand the value of their individuality and your individuality, who also understand the value of the work-life balance, who also who understand that you know that it's not a work anymore, that now we are here not to do the work, now we're here to live 
to mm -hmm. create something of a value, to get paid for this and to live. But we're not living to work, we are working to live. And it's a completely different mindset. You start respecting your teammates. You start, it's not the colleagues anymore. It's not the water cooling. It's a completely different mindset. Yeah, for sure. Which, well, we have a community of these people, of people and, and I love the, our community. They're really it's such a different, because I never belonged anywhere. That's true. Mm. <laughs> and, and, and we're really encouraged. You don't have, you don't have to belong. That's belonging. It's not your, it's not just simply be respectful and understand others. You're like, you don't have to belong. Just be yourself. Be the best version of yourself. And, uh, and now we're introducing, we're working on actually the road which gets you again from getting yourself together, which is the first step to launching either your own business or helping others, again, other compatible people sort of becoming, you know, founding member, co-founder, depending on the right. different sort of your involvement. So that's kind of um, in a nutshell what we're doing. And it's like fascinating. The transformations that are happening, if you truly, if you zone, and I'm just going to only take 30 seconds in this note, if you really step outside mentally for just 48 hours, you just like disconnect everything for just like one week and spend with yourself, answer honestly those questions. You're just like, wow, what a fascinating person I am actually inside. And because of this, so many different, so much noise around me, I never actually bothered to listen to me. Right. And that fascinating person, I have purpose. Have passions, I may not know what to do, but that's what Rico is for <laughs> to help me with my next step. Yeah, that's awesome, Simon. I, I think that's great that you were able to come here and create something like that and uh, integrate yourself mm -hmm. into what's what's going on here in the states. How can people, if they're interested in knowing more about Wico and and your stuff, where can they find you online? Thank you. Uh, it's Wico dot online. We call that online and then with Instagram, we call that online. Same thing. Okay. We will put those in the show notes and uh, as yeah. clickable links so people can access that. Simon, congratulations on, on crossing off coming to the States. And uh, I'm excited that you're here and a part of our community. And uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for being here on the show. Thank you so much, Roger. Again, I really appreciate the invite and I hope. Uh, will help more people to cross off many things of their bucket list. As a reminder to our listeners, in this episode's show notes, you will find links to learn more about this week's guests and information on how you can cross this item off of your list. You can follow my adventures of crossing items off my bucket list on Instagram and Facebook. And as always, new episodes of this podcast are available to stream every Friday morning. We will meet you here next week. And until then, keep living out your list.